Welcome everyone to the webinar. My name is Warren Pretorius and I'm joined by Ron Imbriati and Chuck Wilmot. Between the three of us, we have over 60 years of experience with Dartfish. In today's webinar, we hope to give you an understanding of remote coaching and the components needed for technical analysis. We'll suggest a workflow and then show you a couple of real life case studies. Hopefully then you'll be able to join us tomorrow for a similar webinar, but showcasing remote coaching for game or match analysis. As you're all aware, remote coaching has been brought to the forefront because of recent events. Remote coaching has always been re relevant, but it now becomes part of the new normal in athletic coaching. And remote coaching when done properly allows you to extend your coaching reach and enhance your coaching model. Further, a robust distance, uh, distance learning model enables you to increase productivity by avoiding duplication of effort. A single well-recorded lesson can be shared with multiple athletes and then shared again later on. Other technologies like Zoom, Skype, Teams, etc., can complement the model. To be clear, there are two different remote coaching models available from Dartfish. The first is an enterprise solution for organizations that have it a, with a need for collaboration between multiple coaches, staff, and athletes. This model does require a Dartfish TV channel. The, the second is a basic or one-to-many model that is used by a single coach to work with his or her athletes. This model uses a personal cloud, which is part of the Live S annual subscription. As mentioned, the enterprises, um, enterprise model's core element is um, a Dartfish TV channel that connects all parties, athletes, coaches, and staff. National governing bodies, pro teams, colleges, academies, and even high schools would use this many-to-many -many model. Athletes can consume educational content and also upload their own performance footage for analysis. In addition to sharing analyses with coaches, with athletes and uh, uh, coaches can also access other content on the channel. And the channel also has many other attributes, like the ability to monetize content, integrate with third-party websites, connect to reporting APIs, and a whole lot more. But the basic model is where we will focus today. The student basically sends footage to the coach using one of many free tools available, like WeTransfer, Google Drive, Dropbox, Box, etc. And the coach then uses Dartfish software to create a professional analysis. And then the coach shares it via personal cloud with the athlete. The components we are highlighting are Live S software, which has powerful technical analysis tools and a tagging module for game and match analysis. I think everyone in attendance, if you had indicated that you do not use the software, will have received a trial license from us. In any remote coaching model, the sharing platform is arguably the most important part. Dartfish's personal cloud allows you to share personal collections with an athlete, or you can create a general collection and share it with an entire team. The athlete doesn't, does not need any special software, and they can access all of their analyses from any web-enabled device. So the first study or example I'd like to show you is one from tennis, which, which I will do. The workflow is pretty straightforward. The student films their stroke and then uploads that to the coach. The coach downloads the raw clip and then uses the software as discussed to conduct the analysis. And once the analysis is complete, shares it via personal cloud and then arranges a you know, Skype or Zoom session if they need to. For the capture process, the student, or usually it will be the parent, would film the student on either a mobile device or on a stand standalone camcorder type camera. If they are using a mobile phone, the student will also have to install the app for the uploading tool that they're using. So this this just means if you are using WeTransfer, then you would download the WeTransfer app so that you can film on the on the device and then transfer that to the coach via the app. WeTransfer is what I'm showing here. It's much like sending an email. You upload the clip, type in the coach's email and click on the transfer button. You can also upload multiple clips at the same time. The coach then receives an email and then they click on the link and download it. Then the coach will open the software and you'll conduct a professional technical uh, analysis 
you know, marking key positions, adding drawing tools, comments, side by side or overlay comparisons. And once that is done, they'll upload to personal cloud using a, a wizard in the software. And once uploaded, the coach will be able to view all of the content that is uploaded and also manage or arrange into folders or collections. So let me switch to the software and I'll just give you an example of this. So here I've got a couple of clips arranged. I'm just going to open up one of the clips. You can see on the right hand side, there are key positions that I've already assigned. Chuck will chuck and Ron will show you how these key positions are added. But really all I'm doing is I'm just moving the, the video to a particular point and clicking on the add still shot icon on the bottom right hand corner. The clip the student has sent me, of which I've downloaded, I now open up and you can see that I've also applied key positions to that clip. And here what I'm going to do is do a side-by-side -side comparison. And both of these are already synced up because they have similar key positions which we've assigned as a sync point. Once I'm done with that, I can go into the presenter view and do a live Skype session. Ron and Chuck will show you a little bit more about this. But when I'm done with this, I'll come up year and upload that analysis that I've just done. Again, it's wizard based. Once I'm done with that, this is where it's uploaded to. This is my, my personal cloud. So the analysis that I've just uploaded would be here. And this is what my student will actually see. They can view the video. They can view it full screen. They can see all the key positions that I've added. And they can also go down below and go see the comparison and play it through. You'll see on the bottom here are all of the key positions. You can also scroll down and they can click on the print icon and then see snapshots of all these key positions. If I had added any comments, they would appear below the title. For me to share this with my student, all I would do is just go down to the bottom, click on the share option to give me a link. I copy that into an email and you can also see as I can connect to any social media platforms. All of my clips are arranged, arranged into collections. So it's very easy to create a student collection or a general collection and then share that entire collection in much the same way as I would with an individual video. The process is going to remain the same regardless of what sport that you're looking at. But uh, so we're going to look at the three elements of the process where we're going to capture video, we're going to analyze that video, and then we're going to publish and share that video with our client. In the baseball softball is going to be the same thing if you're working with youth leagues mainly or even traveling teams. You're going to have the student or a parent typically film the assessment drill that you're going to be doing the analysis on and send that to the coach again either through uh, some sort of file sharing system. There's, there's lots of them on the market these days. If uh, you're an existing customer uh, of Dartfish and you tag games or practice, then you're, you're not going to need the parent or the student to send you the video. You're going to probably have video of them from the particular view, you know, hitting, pitching, fielding, whatever that you want to do the assessment on. Once you get that, you're going to again upload that to the coach and then the coach is going to have the software and they're going to download that video into the Darkfish software and cond conduct the assessment using the software. Typically kind of the same process that uh, Warren showed you, but it's going to be specifically for baseball and softball skills. And we're going to distribute that. We're going to share it to our personal cloud or if you have a Darkfish TV channel, you're going to share it to that and then the coach is going to distribute distribute that assessment and drills typically because you're going to do an assessment on the student but you're also going to have some pre-recorded drills that you want the athlete to work on. So let's go ahead and break this down a little bit more in detail and show these steps, these three steps. This is an instruction example. We're going to show a baseball hitter. This could be, a, I have some other examples of uh, softball pitchers, baseball pitchers, fielding. Uh, in this example that we're going to be going over, I'm going to, to show you an assessment of a baseball hitter. In this case, the client would 
client or the parent would capture the video and upload that to uh, uh, upload that clip of the athlete performing the assessment or the instruction skills in a game or practice session. Uh, if you've tagged video, if you uh, are already a customer and have uh, some video already the athlete that you have tagged, you could uh, break that up uh, instead of the parent having to send that video to you. In the, the two models that Warren spoke about, the basic model where you're using the, the cloud, the client is going to upload that video to some file sharing platform. If you're an enterprise customer where you have a Darkfish TV channel, the client's going to upload that to Darkfish TV. We actually have a, a, a new product coming out on Darkfish TV, which is going to make that a lot easier. We call the web uploader. So you don't have to have our software or anything to upload to your Darkfish TV channel. You're going to be able to actually have the client if they're uploading video to you, just do it through a standard web uploader. So in the next part of this step, uh, the coach is going to get the video uh, and they're going to download that into the Darkfish software library. The coach is going to then do the assessment and analyze the hitter. He's going to create, just as Warren had showed you, he's going to create these teaching points and he's going to add to those teaching points his methodology of, of what he's looking for in the different spots or the different teaching points of teaching the process. So he's going to typically add drawings and text that's going to explain that to the clients. And then uh, the last part of it is the coaches can be like uh, Madden and, and they can do a coach's speak and basically create a video presentation of those teaching points with voiceovers. And once uh, that's done, the coach is going to publish that video. Again, on the uh, on the basic model, they're going to publish that to their Darkfish cloud. If they're more of an enterprise customer, they're going to publish it to Darkfish TV. And then the coach can either optionally provide a Zoom session, Skype, Teams. Again, several tools out these these, these days to to uh, conduct a remote session or the coach can also have send an email or a text link to the video instru instruction presentation to the clients and they can look at this on their own no additional application software on their mobile device is required or their computer this is all browser based so they don't need any additional software loaded on any of their devices to review and see the remote lesson that the coach has sent them. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch over to the software and I'm going to show you this process. So this is a clip in a game or a practice session that the client has either sent you or you have because you've tagged the, the athlete, uh, all your athletes in a game or a practice session. So you can see that this uh, this video here is, if I played this, and I'm not going to play it because I know there's a lot of people, but this is just raw video that I have the ability to play and move and slow down. And, and it's just basically the raw video clip that the customer has sent me. So the next step of the process is that I've downloaded this into my Dorfish library and I'm going to go over to the software and I'm going to now be in the mode of the software that allows me to go to these teaching points that I create. And as Warren had said, the way that you do that is, is that you just move the video to a specific point that is going to equal your assessment point that you want to, to show or explain to the client. And you would just add this still shot. When I do that, I name that still shot to my protocol. For example, this is weight shift that I'm looking at. So I've, I've taken this video clip where he conducts his weight shift, where he strides. And you can see that I can either mark this up through drawings 
to text, and I can make some comments of what he's been doing relative to what we've done before. Like in this case, the athlete has shown some improvement by keeping his head still. Before he was swaying <coughs> and moving his eyes, and it was causing him to miss the ball. His biggest problem, though, however, that we highlight in red is the fact that when he starts to rotate in this what I call con rotation to contact, he is he, his hips are slow. And you can see that they're open here a little bit. And when they're opening, it's not allowing him to get the, the bat handle, the bat head through to the ball. He's slow. And if you look at the contact here, in this particular example, you know, I showed here that the ball, he missed the ball in this case. And he was slow. His arm, you can see, he doesn't get his left arm extended because his hips were slow. Follow through is good. And to point this out, I can basically go to a uh, side by side where I'm comparing him to an athlete that does get their hips through on the ball. And you can see here on the left arm that the, the athlete, you're going to compare these things to show specifically to this athlete a visual representation on this visual teaching mode, what we need to do to basically get this problem corrected. Now you can also on the, the uh, you can send this athlete some specific drills of individuals that are working on this key teaching point. So you can work on some T drills or something that sequence back from this position. That's typically what I've done in the past is you go from contact and you go backwards and he'll start to get a feel of what it takes to rotate those hips a little quicker. So I can, I have this, this mode here now that I've broken the instruction down and I can provide almost like a Madden presentation where I go and present the video of this. So I move this thing back up to my athlete and I start recording. And now whatever I'm saying is going to be recorded and I can basically take him through these steps that I've added drawings and text instructions on. And this is creating a new presentation with all these voiceovers on there now. And you can see I can go through all of these preparation points that I've made on this athlete. And when I get done, I just basically say I'm done now and that's creating a new a video clip of all of these instructions with my voice, my drawing, again, sort of like a, a mad narration. Uh, and I have the ability to export that. And now I'm going to show you what that kind of looks like here. So here is the instruction and you can see all the key points that I've made to this athlete and I can actually even go over and and look at this thing. I can basically show you the voiceover and anyone that we have their email to right now, I'm going to send this example as if I was sending it out to the client that you're going to be able to hear this voiceover and, and basically see what this uh, instruction video looks like that I'm going to distribute to the client. With that, I'm going to turn it back over to Warren. In this case, it's going to be very simple. The client's going to set up a, a cell phone on a small little tripod at home in uh, uh, in this one's going to actually be in somebody's living room uh, it could be in a gym space or outside to just capture a, a movement or exercise uh, that basically the teacher and coach is going to review and analyze and then make uh, comments on for improvement and then the, the client will upload the video uh, right from the cell phone as Warren and Chuck have already said uh, using whatever tool of choice there upload tool of choice in my case, I'm just going to show we transfer, but there's lots of different ones um, that can be used. Uh, and then the coach downloads it into his software, his Live S, uh, and basically does an in-depth review, adding drawings, adding timers, adding measurements, adding text. And at the end, he can add audio in the, in the presentation mode. And then he publishes the review along with possible recommended drills if he wants to, to the client to do improve. And then basically it just starts over again. Uh, it's an iterative process, which just over time, the more you do it, it converges on a solution. The more you iterate or repeat the process, the closer you get to a solution and the better you get. So in this case, this is going to be a simple, this is a gym, this is a drill. Uh, it's not a, a simple exercise. It's a, a handstand drill called around the world. Um, and uh, this is being taken. So this is a student in her living room doing this. She's just setting up a, uh, and a mobile device, in this case, an iPhone with a, 
with a tripod. We recommend a tripod all the time because you're just going to get better quality video uh, if you use some kind of tripod, even with your mobile device. Uh, and these things, honestly, are only in the United States, $25 to $35. Uh, they're very, very reasonably priced. Um, and also, the video you're going to get with your iPhone, at least with the iPhone I'm going to talk about, uh, is very, very good video these days. You know, the newer iPhones from version 8 plus, uh, 8 and, and newer, all have 240 frames per second at 1080p. Uh, I mean, the, if it's greater than a version 5, it even has 120 frames per second. So you can get some very nice video. And when you're taking video at 240 frames per second, then, we, you know, we're talking about a 4 millisecond resolution in Dartfish. And so you can certainly see a lot of things that you might not have seen um, without video of that quality. And the beauty is you can get that quality with an iPhone. Um, step number two. The client uploads the video. There's a myriad of different um, uh, services for that. The one I'm showing on here happens to be WeTransfer. I think as Warren mentioned, you really should load the particular app for it because then it becomes a very simple direct transfer um, and uh, up to the cloud. And then basically the coach grabs it. Okay, the coach grabs it, puts it into Darkfish, both Warren and Chuck have shown this, um, and I, I'm just going to just reemphasize it. Um, these are the key positions. These are key positions in different places on this video. Um, here's a whole set of your drawing tools that you can use, and we have uh, a large number of different analysis tools. Uh, and then the, cro the coach will create a presentation in the presentation mode. Um, once he has put his all, all his elements together and then in the presentation mode um you can uh, use whatever microphone you have you can it's always advisable it's a little better quality if you use a headset or some airpods or something like that uh, but whatever source uh, will work uh, you can uh, encode it in lots of different profiles in this example i'm using a, an hd and uh, an mpeg h264 hd format and the nice thing about that can be played then on the mobile phone and everything. But then there's lots of tools. There's some tools that you can bring into the presentation um, mode also. Um, and really all you're doing in the presentation mode is you're actually grabbing elements in this element over here that we call the montage, okay, which are just different elements. They can be key positions. They can be side by sides. Um, they can be lots of different elements that already have drawings on it. You're just grabbing that, actually putting those elements together, and now you're just talking to the student as if the student was really just sitting next to you. And you're going over, you can go rewind, you can go backwards and forwards. So it becomes a pretty powerful package for, for remote uh, presentation, remote teaching, and remote coaching. And then the coach publishes that, and the student can immediately see that. Uh, in a browser on any device, whether it be a PC, a tablet, or, or the phone. This is an example of just looking at it on the phone. Um, and then the coach can optionally execute some kind of online meeting if they want to, a collaborative meeting using services like Zoom or Skype or, or, or GoToMeeting. Um, and once the coach publishes it, the coach can email or text links to not only the video itself, but to the instruction library. So, so in an iterative process, as you keep adding things and adding uh, different lessons as the student is progressing, you really do have a record of all of that within this one collection, and the student can keep looking at that uh, anytime. So now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go to the software real quick. So this is the example in the software, um, and uh, this was kind of, this was the raw video here of the student. These. Uh, this drill called around the world. And what I've done is I've added key positions here. So I've added some key position material in certain points that, you know, I want to emphasize some of the things that she needs to do, some of the stuff she's doing well, some of the stuff that she might need to improve on. And uh, at the same time, I can bring in someone who uh, is 
really good at this as an, an element for comparison, and then I can do a comparison of those. Uh, and the important thing in the presentation mode is that you really want to make up your elements beforehand. So what I've, what I've done on the side-by-side -side is I've actually added some key positions on the side-by-side -side too, so that now I have the whole set of elements that when I go to the presentation mode over here, now I can start talking in here and just, so now I'm just adding voiceover. So when I start, I can start here if I want to talk about the original clip. I can go to key positions. I can just be recording. I didn't press the record key here, but if I did, I would be rec recording this right now. I can then go to the side by side. I can go to the one that I made with already the key positions. I can go here and talk about different parts of this and some of the things she needs to do. Uh, and then I can refer to drills and things like that. And in fact, if I had some drills that I wanted to show her to do, I could add the drills also to this montage and do that at the same time. And then that just gets published as both um, um, Chuck and Warren said up to personal cloud. Here's the example of the, uh, the, the presentation mode all published on the screen. Okay, and it has voiceover if I were to play it right now. And again, like Chuck said, uh, we'll put this example up there so everybody can actually see it. Um, and um, and now I'm so just to just to kind of summarize, I just want to remember all three of the examples that we've shown are are very similar in the steps, and I think the steps are very important. It's a very simple process. Those of you that have not used the software and got the live S. Um, for this period of time, for the, the trial period of time, uh, it's something you can try. And I think it's uh, something that you'll find to be uh, pretty easy to do and very powerful. We'd like to thank you for, for attending.